What's going on guys, Black Friends, and I'm back with my complete video review of the Retina Display MacBook Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my thorough opinions, my thoughts, and my overall verdicts of this laptop beginning right now. Let's go ahead and jump in. So first things first, we have to go ahead and discuss the all new Retina Display. The Retina term was previously a moniker that was assigned to Apple's iPhone and iPad. It was meant to describe just the insane pixel density of these displays on the mobile devices. But now we have a retina level display on a 15 inch laptop, which is kind of crazy to think about. It has a resolution of 2080 by 1800. That is higher than my 27 inch iMac. Just crazy. This new resolution just makes the display incredible to look at and it almost changes the entire computing experience. It just really draws you in and honestly, this may be the best display I've seen in my entire life, whether we're talking about a television here, a tablet, a smartphone, or a computer monitor, this may hands down be the best display I've seen in my entire life. Now the display is IPS, which Apple is known to use. You're gonna get very sharp graphics, very wide viewing angles, and very realistic colors. And compared to Apple's older generation MacBook Pro laptops, you're gonna get significantly decreased glare, which is great because this is a glossy display, of course, and you're gonna get significantly improved color saturation. I honestly have zero complaints against this new Retina display other than it making every display in comparison just look poor. So now my 27 inch iMac, a display that I once thought was the cream of the crop, like as good as it can get, is now pixelated and fuzzy. So this new Retina display in the Mac Pro will really change the way you view displays in general. And I'm glad that we're finally making the push into this ultra high definition era of computing. So right now, not all content is optimized for this display quite yet. So some apps like Twitter do look kind of fuzzy, but as far as web content goes, at least from what I've seen, it looks all pretty good in my opinion. The next aspect of the Retina MacBook Pro that will almost immediately grab your attention is the all new super thin chassis. Compared to the older generation 15 inch MacBook Pros, those were about 0.95 inches thick, pretty much just an inch thick, and about 5.5 pounds. This new Retina Map Pro is a full pound lighter at 4.46 pounds and is only 0.71 inches thick. That is extremely thin for a laptop with a resolution of 2080 by 1800. It's really something to behold. Now, as far as the overall form factor, the build quality, and the materials used, this is what you typically expect out of an Apple computer. It's unibody aluminum, so it's gorgeous, it's premium, and it has a nice heft to it, but it's not too heavy. And it has the overall exact same layout and structure as the older MacBook Pros do. So it has the exact same size trackpad, the speakers on the side of the keyboard, the exact same layout of the keyboard. And overall, it just looks like a thinner, more badass MacBook Pro laptop. Now for a computer this size, it does feel really lightweight when you're holding it in the hand. But for a student like myself, a 15 inch full size powerhouse laptop may be just a little bit too much to carry around school on a daily basis in my bag. This is a four and a half pound laptop with a 15.4 inch display as I've mentioned previously. And I've carried it around school for a few days now. And I have noticed that it does put a pretty noticeable strain on my shoulder when I have my bag on. So this is really a heads up for all my people out there who are out all day long, require a powerful computer with them that can handle all their daily needs and tasks. The Mac Pro can handle all that stuff just fine, obviously, but it is just a tad too heavy to carry around with you on a daily basis, everywhere you go in a bag or a backpack. It's just a little too heavy. The MacBook Air is a much better choice for that, but you know, after seeing this Retina display, I almost feel like buying a non-Retina Mac at this point would be a bad investment. So. I would either say suck it up and get this new Retina MacBook Pro or just wait out until we see some newer, thinner MacBook Pro like 13 inch laptops or maybe even a Retina MacBook Air in the coming years here. So as far as performance goes, the Retina MacBook Pro has been very satisfying in this area right here. As far as handling all of my daily needs and tasks such as editing 1080p video on Final Cut Pro 10, watching movies or full screen YouTube videos, editing in Photoshop for example, um, web browsing, music and stuff. It's handled all that and more without even hesitating or blinking at me. It's been you know, very smooth, consistent, and just a very well-performing machine, 
even at the just insane resolution of 2080 by 1800 I have just been very satisfied with it. Now, as far as gaming goes, that is not in my daily portfolio of tasks that I need to accomplish on my computer. I just don't game on a daily basis. But I did play a few games for you guys to give you guys a good look at the performance of this machine while playing games such as Borderlands, Rage, and Bioshock 2. And I will say that even playing the games at the max resolution available, which is sometimes 2080 by 1800 this laptop can handle that just fine and it is a very playable game. But when you turn on some stuff like real-time rendering shadows, for example, that will put a huge amount of strain on the GPU and the CPU and you will hear the fans kick in and it will lag pretty considerably. So as long as you don't go full throttle on this thing, you know, full resolution and full settings everywhere, anti-aliasing and stuff like that, then you will have a enjoyable gaming experience on a Mac laptop which is pretty unheard of but if you're the kind of gamer who plays crisis 2 at max settings then you may not enjoy the retina mac pro as a dedicated gaming device so as far as the battery life is concerned it's pretty much on par with any other 15 inch powerhouse laptop on the market right now which means first off that it's not going to win any awards and it's not going to last a 24 hour stretch of hardcore intensive continuous usage with stuff like final cut pro 10 video editing photoshopping and you know, gaming and stuff like that, but it's pretty much a given right now. That's just not gonna happen. But if you're primarily doing light to medium level stuff on your computer, like let's say Facebooking and occasional YouTube video here and there, and some light web browsing, then you may in fact make it through a 24 hour stretch on a single charge pretty easily. Now the last point I wanna cover here is the fan noise. When Apple first unveiled this laptop at WWDC a few weeks back, they talked a lot about their new proprietary fan design and how it is almost imperceptible um, you know, during any kind of normal usage. And I will say that their claims are pretty much spot on. During any kind of normal usage, whether it's Facebooking, full screen 1080p YouTube videos, or a movie on your hard drive, you know, playing music through iTunes, web browsing, whatever, you're not gonna hear the fans at all. The fans are dead freaking silent. Even after hours of light usage, the fans don't kick in whatsoever. Only when you're doing really intensive stuff like gaming or exporting a video on Final Cut Pro 10 will you hear the fans kick in even the slightest. But even then, it's so quiet that it sounds like background noise coming from outside somewhere and you almost don't even hear it. So if you're someone who really hates when the fans kick in full blast on your laptop, then you will really enjoy the almost inaudible fan noise of the Retina Display MacBook Pro. So that about concludes my entire video review of Apple's quote unquote next generation MacBook Pro with Retina Display. So what is my final verdict? Well, I am a huge freaking fan of the Retina Display first and foremost. I mean. 2080 by 1800 is just a blessing. It is freaking gorgeous and it changes the way you view computer content in general. It's just an amazing display. And it makes even my 27 inch iMac look very average in comparison. So that really says a lot about the overall quality of this display on this new MacBook Pro here. The form factor is just crazy. It's ridiculously thin and it's gorgeous at the same time. It has Apple's traditional design elements with the unit body aluminum construction. And it is just a typical Apple computer masterpiece. It's just a gorgeous piece of machinery. You can't deny that. Battery life has been so-so. I'm not really impressed by it, but I'm not terribly disappointed by it either. And it charges fast as hell. And performance has just been phenomenal. I mean, even with the insane resolution of 2080 by 1800, it powers all that and more without even hesitating. And it is just a beast as far as performance is concerned. So what I recommend the Retina Display MacBook Pro abso freaking lootly It is just an amazing laptop and for me at least, is the best laptop that I've used in my entire life. I just can't even deny that. It's just so freaking thin, so powerful, retina display, and it is just really cutting edge compared to the typical laptop in the market right now. Now the entry level retina display MacBook Pro begins at a pretty crazy price of 2200, which is outside the price range of the vast majority of the market looking to buy a laptop right now. Nobody really wants to spend two grand on a laptop, you know, it's just kind of unheard of. And the reason for this being is that the laptop is super cutting edge. Just like when the MacBook Air first came out, it costed more than the MacBook Pro did. Why? Because it was super cutting edge. But as time went on, we've seen the MacBook Air drop in price pretty dramatically. And similarly, we've also seen these Retina display laptops from Apple drop in price pretty steeply as time goes on as well. But that is pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the Retina Display Next Generation MacBook Pro from Apple. Go ahead and drop me a comment down below as always. Give this video a thumbs up, follow me, and I'll catch you guys next time. 
Thanks for watching. I'm out.